from the trenches, Tom D, attorney for cannabis. Hello friends in the cannabis community, this is Tom Dean, attorney for cannabis, coming to you from the trenches. I want to talk to you today about the recent, what I consider to be a victory, uh, out of the Arizona Supreme Court uh, in the area of DUI. Um, This was a case that uh, has been going on now for some time. Uh, There are actually two companion cases, one called Dara, the other called Dobson. The one that was decided is called Dara. The, the case started at the Mesa Municipal Court, Med- medical marijuana patient charged with DUI um, for having active THC metabolites in his system. Um, the defense, which was raised by attorney John Tatz, uh, was that he was a medical marijuana patient and therefore should be immune from that type of a charge. Uh, of course, no one's ever argued that uh, cannabis consumers should be able to drive while they're actually impaired, only that If they're not impaired, they shouldn't be convicted of DUI just for having uh, THC in their system, especially when they have a license from the state to possess and use it. The the judge at the city court, the Mesa City Court, denied that motion. It went up to the, on appeal to the uh, Maricopa County Superior Court, which also uh, refused to agree with us. Uh, It was then appealed to the Arizona Court of Appeals, where uh, we once again uh, failed to uh, uh, achieve uh, the immunity. Instead, the court agreed with the state that there was no immunity, despite a provision in the Medical Marijuana Act that clearly uh, addressed the, uh, the presence of THC metabolites in a patient's system. Um, basically, the provision said that a person cannot be convicted of DUI solely because of the presence of THC metabolites in his blood, and it would have been great if it ended there with a period, but the Marijuana Policy Project uh, added some additional language which confused the situation and said as long as solely because of the presence of THC metabolites that appear in insufficient quantity to concentration, insufficient concentration to cause impairment. So uh, it was this uh, last part of the sentence that uh, the Court of Appeals uh, uh, latched onto and said that uh, it can't possibly apply to the DUI metabolite charge because the DUI metabolite charge in Arizona is a zero tolerance statute. There is no threshold amount or, or any requirement that the state demonstrate that the concentration level, the level of nanograms of THC or active THC metabolites uh, was, was uh, beyond a certain threshold. So uh, we appealed it to the Arizona Supreme Court, uh, the Arizona uh, Attorneys for Criminal Justice, uh, the Defense Bar in Arizona, um, submitted a, an, an amicus brief uh, authored by Attorney Dave Eichner, and I filed an amicus brief on behalf of Normal. Uh, we, we were accepted for jurisdiction at the Supreme Court. Oral arguments were on October 1st, and we just got the decision here uh, this past Friday. And I'm happy to say that we did better than we did at the Court of Appeals. We didn't get as much as we wanted, which was immunity. We wanted the court to say that patients are immune from prosecution for driving with metabolites in their system unless the state can prove also that they were actually impaired. But we kind of got that anyhow. What the Supreme Court said was that that the state doesn't have to prove the impairment. Rather, the defendant has to put on what's called an affirmative defense and prove by a preponderance of the evidence, or in other words, more likely than not, that the level of nanograms, THC nanograms, metabolites in the driver's system was insufficient to cause impairment. Sounds simple. Let me read from the, and it's stated quite simply by the Supreme Court. Uh, Supreme Court says that a qualified patient may be convicted of an A3 violation. A3 is a subsection that talks about metabolites. Uh, If the state proves beyond a reasonable doubt that the patient, while driving or in control of a vehicle, had marijuana or its impairing metabolite, active metabolite, in the patient's body. The patient may establish, however, 
an affirmative defense to such a charge by showing that his or her use with, was authorized by the Medical Marijuana Act, which is subject to the rebuttable presumption, uh, don't worry about that part, and that the marijuana or its metabolite was in a concentration insufficient to cause impairment. The patient bears the burden of proof on the latter point by, by a preponderance of the evidence as with any other affirmative defense. In other words, patients can prove to the jury, if they can prove to the jury that the level of, of uh, active THC metabolites in their system was insufficient to cause impairment, then they win the case. But the, what we're not sure of is whether this is a generalized standard or is this a, a, a standard that's sp specific to the individual defendant. In other words, what I'm saying is, does the defendant have to prove in every case that in general, that, a that level, whatever the, the, the nanogram level was in their system, is insufficient, incapable of causing impairment? Because if that's the standard, if that's the test, it doesn't do us much good. Uh, you'll be hard pressed to find an expert witness who will come in and testify with any degree of scientific certainty that any level of THC in a person's system is actually incapable of causing impairment, and that's because individuals vary so widely. You could have someone with a three nanogram level who has little experience with marijuana who could be impaired at that low level, but yet then have someone at 15 nanograms who's a regular user who's not going to have any impairing uh, impairment from that. So. Uh, what we what we in the defense bar uh, are going to argue is that this standard is a, a individual standard. In other words, there's no need for the uh, defendant to prove that no one could be affected by impaired by this level of THC. Rather, in this case, this defendant was not impaired. So, if this, in other words, if the state cannot prove impairment then it ought to be relatively easy for the patient defendant to then say, well, then the levels of THC in my system must not have been sufficient to cause impairment because the state didn't prove that I was impaired. I know that's a little confusing, but that's the way it's, that I think that, it, that, that we have to, this has to be. It's going to go up on appeal again to clarify this point. Probably in another couple of years, we'll be back up there. If the state gets their way, and it's a generalized standard, meaning that if the particular level of impairment could impair, or level of THC metabolite could impair anybody, if that's the test, again, be hard to find an expert witness who will testify that any level is incapable of causing impairment. And if, that, if that's the test, though, I think that the Supreme Court has almost invited a lot of jury nullifications because... I think most Arizona juries, if they find that the patient is not guilty on the A1 charge, the charge that they're impaired to the slightest degree, I think will have a will not be uh, apt to then conclude that the level of metabolite in their system was sufficient to cause impairment. Um, so it's a little it's a little bit conf uh, confusing, but we're going to be sorting that out over the coming months. The important thing to remember, if you're a medical marijuana patient uh, and you you know you are driving, you want to make sure first of all that you've got a copy of the glove box lawyer in in your in your glove box in the event that uh, a traffic stop does appear to be going in the direction of a DUI investigation. Um, you never want to answer questions about your use of medical marijuana, and you never want to provide consent to an officer to search through your car for the presence of marijuana. You also uh, probably want to refuse to consent to perform any field sobriety tests. These field sobriety tests are supposedly objective, but in reality are very often simply used to develop probable cause to arrest the driver and then take them down to jail and require that they submit to a blood test. Um, so 
the the important part is to remember that you will have the opportunity to present evidence to a jury if you're charged with DUI that the level of THC metabolites in your system was insufficient to cause impairment. Um, that while that's not as good as immunity, it still gives us a fighting chance, and that's better than what we got from the Court of Appeals. So. For, until next time, this is Tom Dean, attorneyforcannabis.com, coming to you from the trenches.